Hello everyone, Chief Canuck here with some more Halo 5 news from the latest community update. We get an update on the recent arena refresh, Halo 5 campaign balance, a new forged teaser, and a better look at Emil's armor, a potential variant, and the release window for Memories of Reach, so let's get started. Quickly since the last update improved Spartan lasers, 3 for 3 showed us that kills have gone up for all 3 lasers by 26% for the base model, all the way up to close to 70% for the top tier variant. And also, vehicle splatters have been reduced by 37.5%, which could very well be the result of the Spartan lasers change. I have a feeling it is because now I'm using lasers more often than I was before. Before, I thought I was cheaped out every time I tried to use it, but now they're definitely viable. Speaking of changes, 3 for 3 is also working on the following upcoming items. Modes and playlists like Infection, Matchmaking Preference Options, which I can't wait to see what they specifically mean by this, more Forge goodness, UI updates, post-game medals, yes, so much yes, campaign balance updates, we'll touch on this later, and of course, a lot more. If you somehow didn't know, the Warzone Firefly beta is well underway and has also been extended from April 18th to the 19th because of server issues when it launched. So be sure to try it out and leave your feedback in the dedicated thread on Halo Waypoint, as it is a beta, link to that will be in the description. Infection is on its way with Memories of Reach, the next content update for Halo 5. Multiplayer and art teams have been prepping the mode and map so they're ready to deliver the 12 player survival game. They're playtesting both 3 for 3 made and community made maps. Onto a forged teaser from which we can obviously see we're getting a biohazard decal, which is perfect for the upcoming infection release. The dead bodies, again, great for an infection themed map. Possible wall textures and this weird blue aura, which looks like it's straight out of the upcoming Ghostbusters movie, so it might be better off in Halo 5. Just saying. With Ghosts of Meridian, a bunch of arena maps received some updates, mainly weapons on the map. I really like some of these changes and how they've changed how the maps play. Three for 3 however, did push another update to a few maps in the Team Arena playlist since then. Coliseum Assault has had their binary rifles removed, Sniper and Rockets have swapped locations, which will be interesting to try out, and the Suppressor has moved to the bottom of the grav lip. Fathom Assault has had its saw modified, so it only has one magazine and now respawns in 2 minutes instead of 3. On Empire CTF, the Shotgun has moved back to Tower 1, and the Plasma Pistol has moved to mid between the tower and the pit. 3 for 3 also made Fiesta CTF, Fiesta Strongholds, and Fiesta Assault available in custom games. Normally these game types would have been available in the custom game options for us to tinker with and create, but 3 for 3 has put them in separately as their own specific game modes while they work on adding those options to the system. Next up, Halo 5's campaign will be receiving some big changes and tuning that mainly addresses the difficulty. However, many of these changes apply to the enemy AI and will also apply to enemies in Warzone as well, so that's why I included this in this video. Let's run through some of these upcoming specific changes. They've reduced two-player difficulty slightly, increased single-player difficulty slightly. Now for the Warden, its attacks are a little easier to dodge, particularly on the lower difficulties. The face beam tracks moving targets less accurately, the gravity bomb has less homing, melee attacks have slightly less range, and the Warden is also slightly easier to kill from the front. They've reduced AI-focused turret damage output, They've reduced AI Storm Rifle, Suppressor, and Light Rifle effectiveness. They've increased AI Plasma Pistol, Needler, and Beam Rifle effectiveness. Sword Elites can now swing on the move with a Sword Tackle animation. They've increased Elite, Elite Officer, and Soldier Officer durability. They've reduced the Soldier Bamf frequency. Killing a Crawler now deals an area of effect damage to nearby enemies, so it can damage them or maybe even kill them. The remaining changes they've listed only apply to campaign and specifically campaign co-op. They've reduced frequency of squad AI getting killed while in the turret seat of the player's vehicle. They've made dying by a plasma grenade stick non-revivable. They've increased the chance in co-op with high player count for the AI players to use special abilities like plasma pistol overcharge and throw a grenade. In co-op games, enemy AI will now have increased chance of being promoted to higher ranks. You'll see this mostly in Covenant enemies. And the first player to press call for help when down will now has the priority. Other players, if they are also down, will now have to wait in line, essentially. For a full list of these changes, visit the link in the description for the community update. 
I have to admit, these changes are nice to see, although Halo 5's campaign definitely needs some more replay incentive. <coughs> Daily challenges. <coughs> Although, we will feel many of these AI enemy changes in Warzone even if you don't hop back into campaign. There's no announced date for these changes, but it's safe to assume it will come with Memories of Reach. Speaking of which, Memories of Reach is scheduled for an early May release. So Ghost of Meridian's delay did bump the release of this one, which we assumed was going to be the end of April if things went all according to plan, but it didn't. So it now looks like updates will be early in the month instead of the end of the month. That's if this pattern continues, which there's only one more content update that we know of, and that's Hog Wild. I'm thinking Warzone Firefight, the full release is going to be its own separate thing. Hog Wild is the last kind of content update, whereas Warzone Firefight is definitely just a big mode that's coming to Halo 5. Finally, here's the moment many of you have been waiting for. Here's Emil's armor concept art for Halo 5. Bask in its glory, this detail looks absolutely insane. Granted, it is concept art, I can't wait to see in-game models of it. Now let's hope that black undersuits actually become a thing and are also implemented with the update, as I feel that's a big part of why this looks so good. For those unaware, black undersuits have been highly requested feature for a while. Currently, we only have armor suits that are colored and are affected by our armor color choices. What is interesting, many of you have noticed, if you take a good look at the menu screen when you're searching for a match in the Warzone Firefight beta, the orange spark on the right has a kukri knife. And if we put this image next to the concept art, the armor matches. It's Emil's armor. However, this orange spark has a flame decal variant, as you can see on the shoulder. So it looks like we're going to be getting some sort of flame variant for Emil's armor. So. I guess it's safe to assume that we'll also be getting armor variants for presumably the rest of Noble Team with Memories of Reach. So perhaps we might get Kat's robotic arm as a variant. If you don't know, if you look at the teaser, she has a regular arm, no robotic arm. Now I'm really stoked to see what 343 has in store for armor with Memories of Reach. And with that, that's all I have for today and from the latest community update. Now let me know in the comments which armor set from Noble Team you're looking forward to the most. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, thank you for watching, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more Halo 5 news and content. My name is Chief Canuck and I'm signing out.